Hi, so my name is Brianna Malone once again, and I am a studio art major with a minor in psychology. And my project is about dehumanization and representation in China and Cambodia through the arts. Oh, sorry, I have to raise my voice. Um, so I want to talk about me first in relation to my actual project. I am three minorities. I am black, I am a woman, and I am part of the LGBT community. And through from freshman year to now, I've created so many artworks about my three minorities and about representation because I feel like there are so many stories that need to be told and art is one of the best ways to tell that story. And I'm going to shout out Dr. Winter Parks. From freshman year, I read a book called Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress. And there was a very specific quote that pointed out to me. It says, she's not civilized, at least not enough for me. And that quote, in my mind, summarized every dehumanizing moment that has ever happened in the world. Someone looked at another person and said, you're just not good enough. And that is what drove me to talk about China. And further on in Professor Lowell's class, I started researching Cambodia. And I realized that the two movements had so much in common with one another. So I found this quote and it says, dehumanization, although a concrete historical fact, is not a given destiny, but the result of an unjust order that engenders violence in the oppressors, which is in turn dehumanizes the oppressed. So that's what happened with both of these movements. The leaders caused violence, aggression, did horrible things to people who they just like, you don't fit what I want you to do. And so I'm going to cause, I'm gonna harm you, I'm gonna oppress you, and I'm gonna make you feel like you're not good enough. And so this leads me into China, the cultural movement, also known as the re-education movement, and some people call it the socialist movement. So the leader of this movement was General Mao, and he really wanted to remove Russian ideals from China. That was his biggest thing. He was like, I don't like it, it has to be gone. He had, his like main target was students. So education, intellectuals, he started with the, he started with children. He had them join the Red Guard. He allowed them to terrorize teachers, professors, professionals, doctors. He, they were allowed to go through the streets. And they even like killed some of these people. It was horrible. And with that, it affected the arts very, very badly. So, art, there was still an art representation during this time. However, it was just for propaganda. So all the images represented this ideal of every male, which I, when I found out that phrase, it was so interesting to me because all of these posters, all of these images are about him being like a family person and every male person. So all parts of China, he was there holding hands, being with the people, whether it was people in lower income areas or like farmers, anyone, he was there. He was in a picture with them showing that, oh, I'm here for everyone, which in reality was not true because he harmed so many people. And one of the big things, which is a big color for China now is red was used for um, international communism as well as prosperity in China. Like That's what red means. And so along with the color red, there was an ideal that under Mao there was a utopia. And this leads me into Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. So Khmer Rouge is very similar. Um, both of their stories are actually very similar. Unlike China, there was more strict dress code. There was more like lack of transportation. Like there was not much for the people to have. People still went about killing intellectuals and gov like people in higher power. And their arts were actually very similar. So art was just posters promoting the ideal of Khmer Rouge and what they wanted to happen. Their art university was closed down. Again, art was for the purpose of propaganda for the Communist Party. It was very strictly politic and revolutionary. And for both of these movements, artists had no freedom and no like creativity that was allowed. And if you did express any type of creativity or individualism, you were killed or you put in jail for a very long time.
And so this kind of just leads me into the purpose of my presentation. I want to talk about the influence of art in relation to movements in Cambodia and China and like the artworks that were created out of them and some of the ones that were monumentized because of them. So there's this group called Zing Zing, also known as the Stars in English. Um, and they are the very first contemporary art group in China. They started the contemporary art movement in China. And they, all of these people were actually original Mao followers. And they had an experience that changed their mind and they came together and was like, let's make art about it. Um, they, most of, all of them have been arrested multiple times. Ai Weiwei is a prime example who's very popular now. He's been arrested several times for creating art. And Li is the only female who is a, stay a prominent part of the entire group, which consisted of 77 or 78 students, actually, who all came together to create this exhibition. It's called the 1979 Exhibition. This is a very a significantly small part of the exhibition. But there are hundreds of pieces. You have ceramics, you have paintings, you have sculptures. There's so many different pieces of this exhibit. And the police actually took it down after two days. Um, it was actually staged right next to the National Museum of Beijing. And that was because they wanted to put the idea of amateur style art next to very professional and like scholarly artworks. There, it was also divided in like two categories in a sense. Those that dwell, dwell on life and those who explored art forms. So many works similar to these were hung up on fences stage right next to the museum and they wanted to like compare the artwork and they also, it was